Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and lately I've had a lot of people asking about um, how to install a heater for the toilet seat or maybe even like a bidet or something in your bathroom or your toilet room that might require some power. And uh, the problem is, is there's no outlets in there. So that's because uh, most builders don't actually install power outlets right next to the toilet. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how. So one of the first things you wanna do is locate a nearby power source, hopefully one of the adjacent walls to the bathroom. Once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to turn the breaker off, which you should always do when you're doing electrical work, and that way you can actually handle the outlet and everything moving forward without worrying about shocking yourself. But um, undo that outlet, take it out, and then I'll show you here, um, you create a little bit of space between the outlet and whichever side the stud is. That outlet box, the original one, it's actually gonna be attached to a stud one side or the other. So locate where that stud's at. And then you're actually gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just pry in between it a little bit. Create a little bit of space for your blade that you're eventually gonna use with your sawzall. And you're actually gonna cut the two nails that hold that box in there. And then you can actually feed that box out and remove the original box. You're gonna be installing two retrofit boxes which you can find at any box store. And again, there's links for them in the description below. Once you have that original box removed and you have those wires pulled through, now you're working with a clean hole and just the original power source. Next step is to locate where you're gonna actually put the other box, which is on the other side of the wall in this case, for the bathroom. You're gonna wanna make sure that there's no obstructions because like I found in this one, luckily I checked before and I always like to do this, anytime you have that hole in the wall open and you're starting fresh, reach your hand in there and feel around because in this case, there was a vent pipe. There was a vent pipe to a kitchen below, which actually was a problem because it actually wouldn't let me put the box where I originally thought it would be, which would be just over to the side. If you go more than three or four inches over, the vent pipe was right there. And if I wouldn't have checked that, I would have actually cut right into the drywall thinking that it was a completely open space and I would have possibly cut into that vent pipe. So anytime you have the wall open or you have that outlet box removed, reach in there and feel around and make sure that there's no obstructions. Hey, if you haven't already, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing something right. And the best part of all, it's free. So again, if you haven't already hit it, let's go. So since in this case, the vent pipe was just next to that outlet, I decided to actually put the new outlet in the bathroom by the toilet a little bit lower. And it actually worked out better. I probably should have thought about that in the beginning, that it would probably look more aesthetic um, being below or a little bit lower kind of closer to the baseboards because the homeowners actually like to put maybe like a little rack there or something like that and it actually would block where the plugs at in case you want to hide those cords or hide where the outlets at if it's you know you don't like the way it looks but it actually worked out better for us and it kind of had to go there anyway so it was a win-win but make sure you're checking before you start cutting so reach your hand in there and feel around pro tip of the day. Next, I actually marked where that was gonna be on the other side of the wall. And I did this the old fashioned way. I just took a screwdriver and I went at the bottom of the original box and just a little bit below and I pushed it through the drywall on the other side of the wall. You can see on the inside of the bathroom where it came through and it actually shows you a marking or a starting point for the new box. Now I could actually take the new box and trace around it at that mark and I know 100% that there's nothing in the way of it and now I can cut it out and you know there's no problems. Next thing to do is actually take my rotary tool with my drywall bit and actually cut out that outline of the, uh, the new box and then do a little test fit to make sure it goes in there nicely. Now I can go back over into the master bedroom where the original power source is and I can start installing the new old work box and I can reinstall the original outlet with the new wires that are gonna come across the wall to the bathroom. So I ran a new piece of Nomex, that 12-2 wire, from the original hole across the wall to the new hole inside the bathroom. Then I can actually feed that through the box, feed the original wires through the box, and then install that old work box into place, and now I have this thing ready to go. All I have to do is cut back the wires, reinstall the outlet as it should with the white to the neutral and the black to the hot. I join those two grounds together and then put the ground back on the original outlet and then I'm able to install that back to original. 
Now I can go into the bathroom and I can actually install the new outlet inside the bathroom. This new wire of that yellow Nomex actually comes off the back of that outlet and branches off into the toilet room. And now all I have to do is, again, feed that through the new box, install the new box, and then cut back that wire and then wire in the new outlet. And here's another thing. Anytime you're working around a wet area, you have to have a GFCI outlet. Most homes are built now with all circuits on a GFCI outlet. I know that because when I was building my detached garage, every outlet had to go from the breaker box to a GFCI outlet and then continue on to every other outlet. It's like a, a double safety in case something happens or something pops. It'll stop at the GFCI, hopefully before it even goes to the breaker, but if for some reason it gets past that, you have your breaker as usual. So I just went one step above that and made sure that this outlet in itself was a GFC outlet and it looks nice also because you can see the little green indicator light there when it's all installed. But anytime you're in a wet area or something that could get wet, you wanna make sure that you have a GFCI outlet on that circuit. If not, make sure that that's the plug that's going in that room just to be safe. So once I have that new outlet installed, I can put the cover back on, I can screw everything in, and then I can go turn the breaker back on and test it out. And there you go. First time's a charm. Everything looks like it works good. We have power to both outlets now. I was able to test the original outlet out there in the uh, bedroom. And obviously you can see on the new outlet inside the bathroom, it has that little green indicator light showing that everything is good. It has a really clean look and um, that little LED light on the outlet almost kind of works as a night light inside the bathroom, so it's kind of cool. But um, just something very easy that you can do yourself. It only takes about an hour or two at most. As long as you don't have to jump across too many studs, it can be just that fast. It's, it's almost always possible. It just depends on where you need it and where the original power source is. That's gonna be the big determining factor on how much time it takes and how much work it takes. If you have to go across a lot of uh, studs and you have to move down a wall too far, it could entail some more drywall work, but it's definitely possible. It's, you're always able to do it, it just depends on how much labor. So in this case, we're very lucky that the outlet was just on the other side of the wall. In most other cases that I've seen or that I've done, there's usually an outlet up at countertop height on the other side of the wall of the bathroom where a vanity is and you can almost branch off that and go straight down next to the toilet as well. So that's another option that I usually see. And there you go. Just like that, we have an outlet in the bathroom right there so you can plug in whatever you need inside that toilet room. So it's something you can definitely do yourself. I really hope this video was helpful and that you found some type of value in it. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think in those comments below. And until then, see you on the next build.